Um, thank you for joining us today. This is the Accelerated uh, Accelerate Transformer Model Training with Hugging Face and Habana Labs, presented by Julian Simon, Chief Evangelist at Hugging Face, and Sri Gennison, Head of Software Products at Habana Labs. Before I hand it over to them, I want to just give a few housekeeping rules. Today's session is being recorded and will be made available for later viewing. If you have any questions or issues, please use the chat feature to reach us. And at the end of the presentation, we will have a live Q&A where you could type your questions and we will answer them. Now, I would like to um, present our first presenter, Sri. Sri, I'll pass it on to you. Welcome. Thank you, Pauline. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to join us today. I'm uh, Sri Ganesan, Head of Software Products at Havana Labs. Um, with me, we have Julian from Hugging Face. Uh, Julian? Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Good morning and good afternoon, wherever you are. So I'm Julian. I'm based outside Paris. I'm Chief Evangelist for Hugging Face, and that means I work with the customers to help them understand and adopt Hugging Face tools to build efficient ML workflows. And hopefully that's what we're going to do today. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk to you about our uh, how we've partnered together with Hugging Face. Uh, to make it really easy to bring uh, the goodness of Hugging Face and the goodness of the uh, Gaudi training platform uh, to our uh, developers and end users. Um, and Julian is going to start off uh, with uh, the uh, laying the stage for that. Okay, yeah. Um, before we talk about, you know, how we're trying to, uh, uh, to reinvent how we do deep learning, uh, I think it's important to understand where we're starting from. And I guess that's what I'm calling deep learning one zero. Uh, which is really how everybody's been doing deep learning in the last, you know, five, six years. So, of course, we started with neural networks, a uh, pretty old technology that was resurrected and uh, quickly became um, um, very powerful at extracting insights from unstructured data, you know, using uh, convolutional neural networks for computer vision or uh, recurrent neural networks for natural language, um, and they really became, you know, the the, the de facto solution for uh, deep learning and um, and uh, processing unstructured data. But a lot of time, that really meant building our models uh, ourselves or tweaking existing models. So not so easy. And as we'll see later, we have better solutions now. The next step. Uh, was usually to collect and clean and, and curate a lot of data because as we know, deep learning is very data hungry. And, and that's a very complex and time consuming task, extracting data, cleaning it, labeling it, because most of the use cases were supervised learning anyway. And there was a really a huge amount of time and effort spent on building those data sets and nothing could really start uh, in your project until you had done that. So quite a long lead time to actually starting to experiment. And when you could do that, of course, um, you would need computing power. And uh, one of the reasons why deep learning became uh, so popular is because um, you know we figured out how to use um, massively parallel chips like GPUs for more than 3D gaming and uh, apply them to, uh, uh, to deep learning and other scientific problems. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with GPUs. They're, they're, uh, they're useful, they're efficient, but they're very costly. Um, they're not so efficient from a, a, a power usage perspective. And, you know, lately they've been really difficult to grab. So uh, maybe something else is needed now. And finally, Putting everything together, we worked with expert tools, uh, you know, the early versions of TensorFlow and Torch, uh, Theano, et cetera. And as brilliant as they were, they were really difficult to use. And unless um, you really were um, a machine learning expert with a strong background in, in computer science and statistics, et cetera, you wouldn't be able to get any good result out of it. And that's a problem because we really need everybody to join the machine learning party. And, and any company should be able to add machine learning models to their workflow. So the next step is really trying to simplify this whole uh, deep learning experience. And I'm calling this deep learning 2.0, but honestly, maybe it's just 1.1, you know, time will tell. 
And the first step was, of course, uh, you know, it's a lot of what I do is um, standardizing deep learning models, moving from, you know, collection of different architectures to a more standard architecture. And of course, I mean, transformer models. And everybody has heard about transformers, uh, I hope. Um, Google BERT was really the first model to put transformers on the map in, in 2017, breaking all kinds of uh, uh, NLP benchmarks. Uh, but since then, um, transformers have really proven efficient over a wide range of use cases like computer vision and speech and different things. So this, and we'll show you how transformers are really becoming really a general purpose solution. Um, the next step and the next good news, I should say, is really that it's it's not so important to build those huge data sets anymore. Um, because now, thanks to transformers and transfer learning, a technique where we use off-the-shelf pre-trained models, um, we can get to work much quicker. Okay, so now we can literally grab a model that's been pre-trained on, on a large data set. And that's similar to the one we need to work with. And we can quickly test and evaluate if this model is a good fit. Maybe it just works out of the box. You know, things like maybe translation models generally work very well. And, you know, you don't really need to train them anymore. Um, but if you do, then you can train those models just a little bit. And this is called fine tuning. And this is what we'll show you today. And just bring a little bit of data. Uh, your own domain-specific data and train that model just a little bit more, okay? So that's going to take uh, a much shorter time. That's going to take much less effort to prepare data. Uh, so it's it's a huge win. And when it comes to training, and that's going to be uh, our focus as well today, uh, we see companies building really amazing new hardware that's uh, been designed from the ground up to accelerate machine learning workloads, whether it's training or inference. And obviously, Habana Labs is doing that. And you'll learn about the, 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 how you use that in just a minute. And putting everything together, um, we, we want to build and we, we are building developer tools. So tools that simplify the whole experience, that abstract away a lot of the complexity, and that uh, allow literally any developer out there to work with models, fine tune those models and deploy them without having to understand all the nitty gritty details. And this is really important because we want to democratize machine learning and again, make it available to as many people as we can. Um, so looking at transformers, um, transformers is actually, when it comes to hugging face, is the name of our most popular library. It's an open source library. You can find it on GitHub and uh, it's amazingly popular. Um, and it's actually one of the fastest growing open source projects out there. Uh, you can see on the left, uh, that graph shows you the, uh, the number of GitHub stars, which is a good measure of popularity for different projects. And Hugging Face is the, the yellow line on the left with the steepest slope, showing that when you, you know, we compare ourselves to other super nice projects, we are growing faster, uh, including Kubernetes and Node.js, which is really crazy when you think about it. And, um, and so we're really humbled by this amazing adoption in the community, but uh, we're also very um, uh, happy to see that the industry is picking up. It's not just ML enthusiasts and you know, researchers, it's really also everybody else. And we've been called out in a number of uh, industry reports uh, in the last few months. Um, and uh, whether it's the state of AI report or the Kaggle data science survey, confirming that you know practitioners use transformers more and more over um, other traditional deep learning architectures so that's a really good sign because it means companies and 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 you know business is also adopting transformers uh, everybody loves numbers so um, just to give you some numbers uh, we see today over 1 million model downloads from our uh, hub the hugging face hub which is a our website at huggingface.co, and that number grows every day. And we're happy and humble to serve over 100,000 users every day. So these are really great numbers. Uh, we work very hard to you know, keep the community happy and, and work with our customers to help them build the best workflows possible. And again, that's what we're trying to do today. 
Uh, and I'll pass it on to Shri uh, because I think we need to zoom in a little bit on training and how Abana helps with uh, the, the whole story. Thank you, Julian. So I think Julian set the stage for um, where deep learning has gone from the 1.0 to the 1.1 or 2.0 world and how transformers are kind of taking a very center stage role here. Um, but the, the uh, thing that you have to do when you are working with deep learning is actually train these models, fine tune these models. Uh, even if you're doing transfer learning uh, or fine tuning, it involves having a pre-trained model and doing this training. Now, as Julian said, lots of uh, uh, businesses and companies are adopting AI. We have seen these trends. This is some of the trends we have uh, uh, put out here from uh, an NIDC uh, survey. Uh, we know that businesses are adopting AI for a variety of their applications. They're trying to get the value for their uh, business problems with AI. Uh, they're starting to build a lot more complex models, and these take a lot of more training cycles. So they're doing many iterations of training. 74% uh, of the IDC respondents are saying five to 10 iterations of training. Half of them are, are, are saying they rebuild their models weekly or even more often, and 25% and and of that group is saying they rebuild daily or even hourly, right? So there is a huge demand for training cycles, um, and this is going to get uh, even bigger as we see that there is a, a significant growth in the adoption um, of uh, AI as well over, over the next few years. So. Uh, so what is the um, big industry challenge here though? Obviously, as we see the implementation of AI growing in all of these uh, businesses, uh, what we're finding and the, and the feedback, uh, what we get from our own customers, as well as what we see from uh, all of these uh, uh, analysts and surveys is that cost is showing up as one of the most significant challenges to these businesses that are trying to implement and adopt AI ML solutions. So it's not just a challenge for uh, Habana or Intel, it's, it's a challenge for this industry. How do you provide customers access to more training cycles in a more cost-effective way? And how do we make it uh, affordable? And this is where Habana comes in, right? We, uh, uh, Julian talked about purpose-built hardware uh, to solve the deep learning training problems, deep learning problems. And Habana is one of those uh, uh, companies that has uh, built uh, a purpose-built uh, AI training and AI inference processor. I want to talk about our training processor here today, uh, where we're, um, we have Gaudi uh, family, uh, which is designed from the ground up to optimize AI training efficiency. And um, in terms of the architecture, it's very different from general purpose architectures. Um, it is uh, a combination of a matrix math engine to accelerate matrix operations. It's got a cluster of Tensor processing cores, which are purpose again purpose built for uh, neural networks, um, so they accelerate the nonlinear and element wise operations in your neural network um, topology. We've got a software managed memory architecture. There's a combination of local memories, SRAMs, and HBM, uh, and our software stack takes care of that. Uh, this um, Gaudi first generation has 32 gigabytes of HBM, very similar to uh, uh, what you would see in a V100 uh, GPU. Uh, the other very unique thing that we've done with Gaudi is uh, we've integrated uh, 10 ports of 100 gigabit Ethernet Rocky on chip. And what this allows you to do is have um, fewer components when you build out your server. So it actually reduces the number of discrete components you need. So it saves you the cost from that um, by having an integrated NIC. The second thing we've done is used uh, standard Ethernet protocols, so that uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility by having uh, using industry standard protocols versus uh, a proprietary uh, interfaces. And in terms of training itself, um, with the models going more complex and the uh, the uh, you see that there's a huge growth in this in these very large models and like distributed training. So scaling and scaling efficiency is something that is um, a first principle in terms of addressing for training. And with our Gaudi platform, we are able to offer that uh, with this unique um, architectural feature. And with uh, 
uh, the combination you'll see, I'll also show the picture of the, of the uh, hardware. We're focusing a little on the hardware architecture here for a second. This is uh, as, uh, another industry standard form factor, the OCP OAM form factor. Uh, we're big proponents of, of sticking to industry standard and, and allowing the um, larger ecosystem to benefit from the industry standard um, features. So the next I'm going to talk about our software suite because it isn't enough to have just a uh, purpose built architecture and hardware without the software to put it in the hands of folks who can actually do the magic with with the applications. It's very difficult for you to take advantage of the goodness of the hardware. So we've spent a lot of time thinking about like again designing our software stack for performance and ease of use. Um, first is making sure that it, it is integrated in TensorFlow and PyTorch, which are two of the most popular deep learning frameworks with like very minimal code changes. Um, this should allow you, you know, you or as a developer to get started with taking advantage of Gaudi, uh, just continuing to work in, in whatever uh, uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch frameworks that you're familiar with and comfortable with. And Julian will talk about how easy it is to actually get started with that. Um, in addition, we've got our software stack underneath that actually has a rich library of uh, performance optimized kernels like that's provided by Habana. Um, and then our graph compiler and runtime will, will take the neural network graph from the framework, identify what's the subgraph that can be accelerated by the Gaudi devices, automatically you know, extract that, optimize the, the performance for you and, and um, run the optimized recipe on the Gaudi devices. On the far left, you'll see we have this uh, customer kernel library. Uh, we give you the option to actually program our uh, TPC kernels. And so you can write your own custom kernels if you have a specific need. We find that there's a very small number of, of uh, what we call ninja developers who love to actually extract every last ounce of performance. Uh, we wanna empower you to write those kernels uh, and, and we're happy to kind of say that, you know, our graph compiler will pull that in and, and make it uh, work with, uh, with the Gaudi devices. Uh, we did not stop with just building a software stack. We actually want to make sure that our developers uh, are able to uh, use it effectively. So uh, we put together our, our developer collaterals on our Habana developer site. We've got uh, 40 plus models on our GitHub repository. We've got a developer forum. We've got tutorials, uh, uh, lots of uh, video tutorials, you know, whichever format as a developer and a data scientist you like to consume and learn. Uh, we're trying to put our content in that format so that it's easy and you have reference examples and that the you know kind of lowering the barrier to entry is one of the most critical things that we need to do and and um, we empathize with our developers and we want to make that happen um uh, yeah, so I'm, and, yeah and, so, and part of our partnership is is our also lowering that barrier right julian <laughs> Yeah, and uh, well, if you're a ninja developer who can write custom kernels for Habana, you know, I, I have to say I'm in awe. I, I'm not one of those. You know, I'm, I'm a simple person. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, Habana, the Habana accelerator and the SDK is super, super efficient. It's super rich. Um, but what about, you know, what about people like me who just want to quickly get the job done and they don't want to get or they simply cannot get into the, the hardcore details. So that's really what we focused on. And when we worked with uh, Habana to, uh, to integrate, uh, you know, the, the Habana Gaudi chip and the, and the Synapse SDK into the transformer tools, you know, we thought, okay, we need to do this in the simplest way. So let's see where that fits. Uh, what you see here is really the what I call the family picture, you know, for a hugging face. Um, so starting on the right, Obviously, we have the data sets and the models that are hosted on the Hugging Face Hub, uh, you know, 6K plus data sets, 60K plus models, and that number changes every day. Models for natural language processing, computer vision, audio, speech, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you will show you how you can download those in literally one line of code using our open source libraries. And, and once you put those two together, obviously you could train anywhere, but when it comes to, uh, to accelerating uh, and, and uh, using Habana, 
Um, you want to work with the optimum library, which is, uh, you know, what we'll talk about in a minute. And, you know, in a nutshell, optimum is a, is a library for hardware acceleration that has a super simple API that's extremely close to the vanilla transformers API. And so you can accelerate your jobs uh, and, and train your models much faster than before. Then um, you could move that model to spaces. Spaces is a, a really cool way for you to build um, web applications using uh, frameworks like Gradio or Streamlit. And in just a few, line of, few lines of code, you can showcase your model uh, in a, in a user-friendly way for you know, business stakeholders and customers and generally non-technical people who would not understand what you're doing in a Jupyter notebook and would much prefer to see the model in action in a proper web application that we host on, uh, on Hugging Face. And then obviously you could deploy your uh, models for production. So we have a, an inference API solution that, uh, that we host. Uh, but again, you could use the Optimum library, which also includes hardware acceleration for inference. And, and I have to say, we, we did, a, and we are still doing a lot of interesting work with Intel on, uh, on inference acceleration as well. Um, to complete the family picture, uh, we have cloud partnerships where uh, we were integrated as a first party framework in Amazon SageMaker. So we have built-in containers to train and deploy models on SageMaker using all the SageMaker goodies. Uh, and we also have um, uh, the Hugging Face endpoints on Azure where going starting from the Azure marketplace, uh, you can quickly deploy any NLP model from the hub to manage infrastructure on Azure in just a couple of clicks. So these are really good options for cloud users. So that's the picture. Now let's zoom in on Optimum. So as I've said, Optimum is an open source library that's dedicated to accelerating um, training and inference. Oops, uh, there we go. Um, dedicated to accelerating training and inference. Um, and what I really like about it is it's minimal changes to the code, right? I mean, there are lots of options to accelerate models, but, you know, I, I'm sorry to say a lot of them are a little bit awkward and too complex or, you know, you just need to dive too much into the model and start hacking it. Uh, there's no such thing here, as you'll see in a minute. And of course, we have support for Abana Gaudi uh, using either a, a single accelerator or multiple accelerator. And we'll show you some good numbers. Uh, Shri mentioned uh, scaling is important. And so we're going to make that point uh, in a second. So uh, if you're interested in the in the background story and some of the setup uh, to quickly test Habana uh, I would refer you to this blog post that we wrote uh, a few months back. It has all the details that you need. Um, when I say it's simple and minimal changes, this is what I mean, right? So on the on the top, uh, on, on the top code uh, snippet here, you see vanilla transformers, okay? And using the trainer API, which is our high level API, yeah, you define some training arguments, hyperparameters, et cetera. Uh, and then you um, add those arguments to a trainer object with the model you want to train and the data set, et cetera, and you call train, okay? And that's a very generic training uh, example that's going to work with uh, pretty much anything out there. Okay, so, uh, you know, chances are that's what your code looks like. And the example we're going to run in a minute looks exactly like this. Now, if I want to move from training on, you know, whatever platform I'm using to training with Habana, um, this is what I need to do. And I'll, I'll prove it when I show you the, the difference between those two code, uh, those two uh, uh, training scripts in a minute. Uh, so I need to import the Optimum Habana library. And I really... I only need to replace trainer with Gaudi trainer and training arguments with Gaudi training arguments, um, as you can see in the in the second code snippet. And the only extra thing is I, I need to load uh, a config for the model that I'm going to train. And this includes parameters for uh, model specific parameters for the, for the training process to, to work. And that's about it. And it's really those, let's call them three lines of code that you need to change. And you can migrate your code from, you know, CPU, GPU training to Habana training, okay? And there's nothing else than that. So, uh, Shri, let's go to the demo, right? Uh, so, yeah, again- absolutely. I um, think just to, just to also yeah, highlight, ahead. right? Going back to what you had talked about, I think as part of our partnership, 
uh, we really focused a lot in terms of our, in terms of building out the solution to really like make it as easy and as as similar as possible to the existing transformer user experience. So transformer users are coming in and able to take advantage of Gaudi with very, very little effort. And so that's, you'll see that, you know, whatever uh, is needed, the couple of lines of code I had talked about, even that got abstracted away into just Gaudi training arguments and Gaudi a trainer yeah. and Gaudi config. So, uh, you know, from two lines of code to like literally, you know, just making them arguments to, to transformer. So uh, that's that's been our focus, again, lowering the barrier and we'll keep, you know, kind of adding a lot of coverage on different models. We put out a lot of reference models already. Um, we're going to keep adding a lot more. So, you know, those who come into the Hugging Face Hub and look at what Habana offers, you'll get a lot of reference examples right out of the box. Absolutely. So just a little bit of context. So the code I'm running here is on GitLab. I used a, a URL shortener because it's a crazy repo name, but don't, you know, trust me, this is going to GitLab and not to uh, any, any evil place. And, um, and I'm actually using uh, an instance on AWS because those uh, those Abana accelerators are available on uh, DL1 instances on AWS. Um, we won't go through the setup, which is really you know uh, exactly what you think. You know, fire up an instance, pick an AMI, blah blah blah. And again, all the steps are in that blog post that you see here. Okay, so uh, we'll, in the interest of time, we'll just skip that part. So. Let's, uh, here's the blog post, okay? And you can see you have screenshots and everything. So trust me, you're going to get to the end of it. No worries at all. Um, so so I'm on the, uh, um, let me maybe zoom in a little bit. Okay. So now I'm logged in to that, uh, to that GL1 instance. And the first thing I want to do and you want to do is you need to pull now, there are different ways to use those those instances, but the 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 simplest way that I've uh, found is really to use the containers that uh, Habana Labs uh, has built for us. Okay, so you just go and pull that Docker container, uh, and this one uh, includes, of course, all the Habana SDK, all the drivers, uh, and PyTorch one eleven. So I've already done, done that, okay? Um, and then we can run the container and I've got a container running here, okay? Um, so um, it's, it's, all, it's all ready to go. And you know, the first thing we wanna do is of course, we wanna take a look at those fancy chips. And uh, so you can use that HL SMI command uh, that shows you that indeed you do have eight of those Habana Gaudi chips on the on the instance you know ready to go okay uh, of course they're doing nothing for now uh, but they will soon be busy so let's go and um enter the um um my repository here um and the the use case we're gonna work on and that's why this thing is called amazon shoes <laughs> which is a funny name uh we're building a multi-class classification model to predict the star rating or of shoe reviews, okay? So um, this is part of a larger workshop that, I, that I've built and you can see all the different notebooks here. Uh, so again, uh, take a look at that repo if you wanna run uh, and uh, all the different bits and pieces. But for now, we'll, of course, we'll just focus on the Habana piece. So before we look at the Habana code, uh, let's take a quick look at the, the generic code, right? The, the, the starting point, so to speak. So this is my vanilla script, okay? And this is the one I could run on, uh, you know, CPU and GPU. And, you know, don't worry if you're not too familiar with the Transformers API, it's really not complicated. You, you'll, you'll get it in a minute. So, you know, I'm importing uh, the libraries. Uh, I'm loading the data set that I already prepared. Okay, so uh, it's just a bunch of shoe reviews, right? So it's a text review, a product review, and a star rating from one to five, okay? So I downloaded that from the Hugging Face Hub and prepared it a little bit, but there's nothing complicated here. And then all I need to do is download the base model I'm gonna work with. And you can see I'm doing this in a couple of lines of code. And the model I'm using is 
my good friend Distill Bert, which is you know a good baseline model to to start with um, before we try more complicated things. So you know, grab the model, grab the tokenizer, tokenize the data sets, right? Transforming those sentences, that natural language, into tokens, integer tokens that the model can learn. And then here comes a tr you know the training argument object where I define the number of epochs and the batch size and some the learning rate, I mean, the usual stuff. And then we find the trainer object that puts everything together, the model we want to train, the arguments, the tokenizer, the, the metrics function to compute met, uh, accuracy uh, during training. And of course, the training set and the validation set. And then we call train and off it goes, okay? So this is really transform Transformers 101. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's what we do every day for, um, <laughs> for a living when we work with Transformers. So that's what I started from. You can actually, like I said, you can run that code uh, in a notebook on another compute platform and, and that's okay. But if you want to move to Ibana, right? What do you need to change? Well, we saw that in, in a previous slide. So. Just to make that point, okay, before we run the code, I want to show you that there is nothing more than what we said to, uh, you know, migrating this. Okay, so the first script is the one you just saw. The second script is really the Abana script we're going to run. Okay, and we see that, you know, yeah, we, we replaced those objects, those Transformers objects with our Gaudi counterparts. Okay. Um, we pointed at an Abana configuration for Distilled Bird based uncased, which is on the Hugging Face Hub. We'll see that in a second. And then we're replacing training arguments with Gaudi training arguments. And then we're replacing trainer with Gaudi trainer. And there's nothing else. And I can promise you, you should never really trust an evangelist. Um, but I can absolutely promise you that this is really what I did on my first try, okay? When I first started working with uh, Optimum Abana, I took that vanilla script and I just, you know, read documentation for, documentation for a second, replaced those objects, and it worked on the first try, you know? And, I, you know, take my word for it. It's, uh, it's that simple, okay? And I wish I could say the same about other tools and platforms I work with, but... Uh, this was a very smooth experience, uh, even for a guy like me that doesn't, who doesn't really know what he's doing when he's messing with hardware acceleration. So here's the code that we have now, okay? And, um, and well, we can take a look at it, but it's really, you know, it's really the same thing, okay? Now we have the Gaudi object. Uh, we have the, um, the, conf the config file from the hub, okay? You can go and, uh, and take a look at the Habana organization on, uh, on the Hugging Face Hub. And you'll see config files for the model that we jointly support. And you know there's more coming as uh, Sri mentioned. And if we look at uh, the distilled bird based on cased, well, we'll see of course um, uh, the config file that has you know, the particular model specific configuration to apply to you know, optimize uh, the model. Okay, so that's that's about it. So now the only thing that's left is just say, hey, why don't we run this thing? Okay, and here I'm going to run it as it's, you, yeah, you just saw that, right? It's a single node run. Uh, so it's going to grab one of those Habana Gaudi chips and it's going to compile if that's the right word tree, apologies if it's not. <laughs> it's going to optimize uh, the model for, for that chip and it's going to start training. And of course, it all does that automatically, right? You saw the code. I'm just using my trainer-like API and, and nothing more, okay? And off it goes, okay? And we can see, okay, this will take 29 minutes on one chip. Uh, obviously, we are not going to wait for 28 minutes. So let me just interrupt that. But I want to make the point that this is all it takes to run. Okay. Uh, and now you could say, well, wait a second. You, you know, you told us we have eight of those chips, right? And indeed we do. So how do we do, how do we get those eight chips to work? Okay. And, you know, that was one of my questions. And, you know, 
anyone here who's worked with distributed training knows how tricky this can be, right? Um, now, of course, we have nice frameworks to set everything up, but there's always a bit of code to change, right? Uh, you need to replace an object with the distributed blah, blah, blah version of it, and, and you need to mess. And I was a little nervous, I have to say. And then my, uh, you know, my colleagues told me, no, you don't need to change anything. And honestly, I didn't quite buy it until I run this command. Okay, and there's this Gaudi spawn script, which is part of the Optimum Habana repo. And all you have to do is give it your existing script, right? You can see that's the same script, no, no change at all. And say, hey, now I want to train on eight Habana Gaudi chips. And you run this, okay? And it's gonna it's gonna fire up that job and distribute it automatically on the eight accelerators available in this instance. And this is gonna take a couple of minutes. Um, so why don't we let's let's let give you give it a second to start? Yeah, it should be very short. It should be four or five minutes max. Um, and and Shri, maybe you could explain you know the magic happening here. How do you make it so simple uh, to distribute that, that code to those different chips? I, you know, I, want, I honestly want to know. <laughs> yeah, so um, part of the work is done inside the, the model itself. We've integrated it with uh, a, a PyTorch DDP. This is a PyTorch Distilbert example. Uh, it's fairly, fairly simple to kind of get, get set up. And, and basically, when, when we work with the Hugging Face uh, team, we enable the distributed training to happen through that Gaudi spawn script so that it's very easy for you to just uh, kickstart and, and get going with it. Uh, if you were using a TensorFlow model, we have it integrated with uh, Horovod or the TensorFlow uh, API for distributed training. So our goal, like I said, has been to take advantage of whatever is available in the frameworks and then make it very simple to just turn on distributed training. Uh, of course, when you know there's more configuration you'd have to do if you're distributed across multiple instances, there's a uh, configuration you'd have to do on, on the AWS side to set up a, a cluster and, and get that going. Yes, so we could, uh, we once could you do, do that, that right? yeah. we could yeah, do multi can, instance, of course. Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah. But the distribution across that, it's actually very similar. You don't have to do, you know, after you set it up, you can run it on any number of uh, Gaudi devices. So it's very, very straightforward. Okay, so we can see it's going to take uh, it's going to take a, a couple of minutes. So, of course, we want to know how well this uh, this is scaling, right? Um, so, I actually computed. Well, I didn't. I, I run a few. Uh, where's that? Uh, okay, here it is. Okay, I'll show it like that so that we can keep an eye on the. Uh, uh, we can keep an eye on the on the numbers below. So, I actually run this exact example on one two, four, and eight um, HPUs, right? And, and you can see the numbers here. This is the configuration that I use. So one DL124XL instance on EC2. Uh, this costs uh, a little more than $13 on demand. Um, you know, full disclosure, I am using an on-demand instance here because I really didn't want uh, a spot instance to be interrupted right in the middle of our discussion. But I also ran that thing on spot and, and I did get a 70% discount. So that took me down to maybe $3.5 per hour. Okay. Um, and so you can see all the, the exact setup and, and you can see the plot on the left that shows the, the blue line is actually the, it's the real life training times. And the red line is uh, the ideal perfect linear scaling. And you can see, um, there is a little bit of overhead, which is probably you know the cost of distributing and, and message passing, etc. But it's it's very limited, and ignoring this, we do get near perfect linear scaling from you know one to two to four to eight, uh, which is very impressive. You know, usually there is it continues beyond beyond that because it's the same scaling capabilities I talked about, right? The the same mix. If you, if you use that for uh, scaling across multiple nodes and multiple uh, servers, yeah. <laughs> that's how we offer you that linear, linear scaling and near linear, yeah. that scaling yeah, efficiency. I guess I'll do that next. I'll go and try, you know, 16, 32, 64. <laughs> See how far that line goes <laughs> to the right. <laughs> but it, it's very nice. And again, um, 
I'm impressed how simple this is because sure, you know, you can get to the same or the same kind of scaling, the same kind of performance using other platforms, but there's a lot of extra work you need to do. You know, the, uh, there is no particular tweak here. You, the, what you see is what, what I did. And uh, there's no tweak. There's no ninja stuff. I'm sure ninjas could uh, could get you know that blue line even closer to the red line, but out of the box this works very very nicely. And of course, I I did compare this to uh, to GPU training. So I, I grabbed uh, a P three sixteen XL, which has eight NVIDIA V one hundreds, and I could not get a P four instance. Um, just so you know, I couldn't get access to one because they're pretty busy. So that's what I used. Um, and this is, you know, a little bit more expensive than the Gaudi, um, the Gaudi instance. And using the full eight GPUs, this train for a little more than a thousand seconds. So, you know, ballpark, uh, you could say this was, uh, the, the, the Gaudi instance was about 3x faster than the, that P316XL instance. And it was approximately twice cheaper, okay? So about 3X faster, 2X cheaper, that's a 6X improvement in cost performance. And again, out of the box, without me tweaking or going crazy or you know asking the ninjas to, to do uh, whatever they do, okay? So um, that, I think that's, that's pretty impressive, okay? And we see that job completed. In again, you know, 325 seconds, uh, which is a, even a little better than my previous example. So there you go. <laughs> Maybe there were a few optimizations last night. You never know. Okay, so um, th this is pretty cool, and uh, I guess the the performance, the raw performance, is nice, but it's really cost performance, right, Tree? That's what right. customers are really interested in. Exactly. And and I think this is where uh, Gaudi really shines is in terms of offering that kind of cost savings. Uh, what we've done here is we're showing you um, both image and language models with Resonant 50 as a proxy for image models uh, and uh, BERT large as a proxy for uh, NLP. And we compared uh, the Gaudi DL1 performance uh, versus uh, other GPUs. We've got the A180 gig. A140 gig and the V132 gig. Uh, these are the different um, uh, instances that are available on uh, AWS. Um, we've used the on-demand pricing for the uh, P3 and P4D instances and the DL1 instance to compute the actual cost um, for, for training uh, Resna 50 and BERT. So you'll notice that uh, the cost savings of running Resna 50 on the, on the vision side, the, the chart on the left, uh, we get 45% uh, uh, to 49% versus A100, up to 77% uh, versus a V100. Um, for BERT large, I kind of have two charts here. There's phase one and phase two. The training regime is different. So you want to highlight, obviously, even if it's a certain class of models, it just depends on the types of parameters you have for training. So you may get some variability in the cost savings. So with phase one, we get 22 to 26% cost savings versus a 100 and 64% cost savings versus a V100. And with phase two, you get nearly 55% uh, to 52%, like uh, on the A100 uh, 80 gig versus uh, 40 gig, 80 gig versus Gaudi, and about 75% uh, versus a V100. These are again representative. It's like Julian said, different models will give you different, like with the distal bar, he was able to see tremendous uh, cost savings. Each uh, model is different. The type, type of uh, uh, work that you do with the model is different. So in general, across the board, you should expect to see significant uh, cost savings. And we've heard that from AWS, like up to 40% better than the uh, leading GPU instance is what they've, you know, across a, a variety of workloads. So uh, that's one of the most significant things we've talked about in the beginning when we set up that as, as training is becoming more expensive, uh, how do you make it more uh, affordable is one path. And in terms of democratizing access, it's access to the uh, hardware itself by being part of our, you know, being available on a public cloud like AWS, uh, making it easy to get access to our software, uh, working with partners like Hugging Phase, we're making it easy in, in terms of access to actually running these workloads and democratizing uh, access for developers. All of this is part of actually enabling that whole uh, AI revolution that's going on right now. Uh, and enabling all the different uh, users and developers. 
Um, so what's coming next, right? That's that, yes, that's already. Yeah, I think that's a, a that's a great what, question. <laughs> what's next? <laughs> so let's let's go to the next slide. That's coming next, Gaudi 2. We announced Gaudi 2 uh, in May. It was launched in May this year. And we we're very, very excited. This is uh, our second generation Gaudi uh, product. And you can see that it actually has, in addition to the cost efficiency that because it's building on the same architecture as the first generation Gaudi. So it's just gonna have that built-in efficiency that comes in with the purpose-built accelerator. We are able to offer, uh, it's a seven nanometer product. We're able to offer leadership performance and you can see the benchmarks on uh, um, ResNet 50 and BERT again, uh, nearly 2x better uh, throughput versus A100 uh, for both, you know, for the popular vision and language models. So we're very excited and, and uh, if you haven't caught uh, the MLPERF results, you should go check it out. Uh, within a very short time after launch, we were able to actually submit um, uh, for MLPERF and came out with, you know, actually, you know, significant performance, leading performance and demonstrating the same uh, with MLPERF as well. All right, so well, looking forward to, to testing that new, that new baby. Um, but until then, uh, let's, let's, um, let's wrap up, right? So I think the three main takeaways are, you know, that of course transformers are quickly becoming a, a general purpose solution for deep learning. Yes, they did start with NLP, but um, and you know uh, there's still a lot of uh, amazing NLP use cases out there for transformers. But increasingly, we see computer vision and speech um, uh, also benefiting from transformers architecture, and uh, and you know improving on on state of the art benchmarks. So um, and we even see uh, you know. Um, um, we even see uh, tabular data being, you know, being learned by transformers and reinforcement learning and, and all kinds of use cases. So, you know, it's really generalizing nicely to, to many, many different machine learning problems. Um, I think the second important takeaway is, uh, you know, Habana Gaudi has the best cost performance ratio for transformer training. And, you know, fair enough, uh, different models, different data sets, different use cases, different test types will give you different results. But, you know, uh, out of the box, you, you get significant uh, acceleration and cost optimization compared to other platforms. Uh, and I think that's, you know, that's really, really significant. And what I really like the most is um, this is really accessible. Um, you can, you can fire up a DL1 instance on AWS in minutes. Uh, you can adapt your transformer code for Optimo Mabana in minutes, put everything together and, and start training. And, you know, again, when I first ran my examples on Mabana, uh, you know, there within, within maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes, you know, I was training on Habana. And, uh, and again, you know, take my word for it. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't the case. Um, so I think this is a very interesting uh, platform for developers. You don't need to understand all the crazy stuff that uh, that the Abana folks are building. And you know, it's amazing that they build it. But you know, I want to solve business problems with ML. And of course, I'm an engineer. I'm curious about those crazy chips. Uh, but most of all, you know, I want to build models quickly and you know, high quality models and solve problems. And I think the combination of Optimum and transformers and the availability on AWS uh, lets you do that. Um, so I guess the next thing is, you know, how do you get started? <laughs> so when it comes to uh, to Hugging Face, uh, if you're new to Hugging Face and transformers, um, you know, I cannot recommend enough that you check out the, the tasks page. Uh, you know, my developer relations colleague, I've built an amazing set of uh, of videos and tutorials that explain uh, the, the different problems that you can solve with transformers. Again, NLP, computer vision, and audio. Uh, and then you can follow the Hugging Face course, which is really um, uh, targeted at developers. If you're a machine learning expert, that's fine. You, you will learn stuff as well. Um, but if you're, uh, you know, if you're a developer and you've, if you're intimidated uh, by, um, I don't know, deep learning and transformers, 
you know, this is a really friendly place to start and you'll be running code in no time. Uh, and it has a ton of examples. And, uh, and of course, you can go and check out our libraries on, um, on GitHub and, you know, feel free to contribute. We're always, always looking for, uh, for people to help us out. Uh, if you want to stay in touch, uh, happy to connect on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Medium, YouTube, and anywhere else. You know, I'm, I'm easy to find and I'm always happy to uh, answer questions and, and help you out. Uh, Shri, what about uh, Habana Gaudi? What are the best resources to get started? Yeah, so thank you. I think I think the um, best place to start, like I said before, is our developer site. I think that's the easiest way to come in. Look at all the assets that we have, uh, whether it's documentation, training, tutorials, like little video uh, nuggets or uh, figuring out um, reference examples on GitHub. We've got lots of examples on our, our uh, Habana AI GitHub. Uh, we have, uh, like I said, 40 plus reference models. So these are already ported over. So it's fairly straightforward to get started. Uh, and then, like we said, we have also models on, on hugging face now. So you don't have to come and figure out those few lines of code. Like it's already wrapped inside. And uh, we've published those on our hugging face uh, Habana Hub. Um, you can take a uh, look at the organization page. Julian was showing you that page where the list of models are available. Uh, we're going to keep today we've got a lot of the nlp models uh we're going to keep adding more uh transformer models uh, over the next few months keep an eye on that page um you can um uh, you know like also you can you can watch our uh, github repo both the github repos uh, because that's where a lot of action happens um and we're looking forward again if you have any questions we've got our habana forum if you get if you run into issues or need help uh reach out to us our application engineering team is here on standby to help you on your journey. And uh, we hope we've conveyed how easy it is to get started and to take advantage of the goodness of the Hugging Face Transformers and the Gaudi platform. Um, and we're looking forward to hearing your stories. Uh, please share if you've had a, a good experience or we, we need to make things better. I'm all yours uh, as a, as, uh, from a product perspective. I think it's most important to put it in the hands of those who are gonna do good stuff and cool stuff with it, so. Thank you. All right. Well, thank oh, you, uh, Shri. And I hope this was, you know, well, I hope this was useful. I can see we have a few questions. We have a few questions. We can, we can, uh, let's pick up a few. We don't have a lot of time. Okay. Uh, so well, we're gonna... I'll... go ahead. I'll... I'll let you pick. <laughs> Maybe we'll start. I Whatever popped up first in my, um, like, what are the, I think the nine models that, that are on Hugging Face, what if I want to use another Hugging Face model? That's a, that's a good question. So those models, nine models on the hub are more like examples uh, to show you how to use the Gaudi config, the Gaudi trainer. It's very simple, uh, but we wanted to give enough examples so you can just get out of the box, uh, start working on it. Uh, it'll just work out of the box, but you can use the exact, if you look at you know, the instructions of how to take a transformer model and then replace it, it's, it's very simple to go ahead and use other transformer models. So, uh, you can try other models and, and we're here. I mean, if it doesn't work, it's a bug, we'll go fix it. So uh, it should work. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we have time for a few more questions. Yeah, right. go ahead. Just pick the ones. Uh, pick yeah, the, the ones. next one is kind of related. What happens to models which are not there on the Habana uh, organization page? I just answered that question. Uh, you you know, the instructions are there and uh, in terms of how to make the changes to the transformer existing. Well, you should learn how to work with the transformer library first. Once you know how to work with the Hugging Face transformer library, then it, then you get into like the, the couple of lines of turning uh, on the Habana Optimum library. Yes. Um, right. So, and you know, it's it's very easy. Like and we're like it's it's not it's not at all difficult. Um, yeah. Of course, we're you know we're actively developing uh, you know Optimum Habana, and so you know more features right. are coming, more models will be. Uh, will be published to the model page, you know, um, you know, some really, really cool ones. We're not going to give names now, but, uh, you know, I think it's safe to say by the end of the year, there will be some really exciting models available there. Um, and uh, maybe we'll get a chance to talk about those in future presentations. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's still very new, but you can expect, you know, lots more coming your way. Let's see, the other one is around FP8. Um, Gaudi 2 supports FP8 data format. Does it, uh, so does the latest upcoming GPU. Do you expect FP8 to be used extensively for training and versus BF16? So I, I would say that this is, a, a, you know, in terms of, um, 
uh, lower precision. I think we are seeing that, that there is an interest in FP8. Uh, we will obviously support it as obviously we have to see the models pick up and, and you know the, the, the ecosystem has to move in that direction to kind of demonstrate the value of lower precision, whether it's for uh, uh, reducing cost or power, whatever that might be. Um, and there's an accuracy trade-off that's with any any other, any other kind of low precision. So uh, I'm not here to predict a trend. We're seeing that there is a there is a the GPU supports it, how Gaudi supports it. We'll have to see how models get built for FP8, and then we'll work with the developer community as as things uh, evolve in this space. All right. Uh, all right. So. I'm not going to comment on the on the uh, product roadmap. We we have both uh, uh, our Gaudi platform and our inference platform. So uh, we announced that we have our Greco uh, hardware coming soon. So um, let's see the charts using. Uh, uh, so that's a great question on whether we would be able to bring SaaS options, uh, Gaudi to SaaS options like. Mm, Cola. Yeah. In Kaggle, I think that's a great. Uh, that's actually great uh, feedback. We will we will be looking into this. Uh, I don't have exact plans, but this is something we want to empower more developers to have access. Like uh, this is something we really care about is democratizing access. So this is part yeah. of that story. We will be uh, looking into um, how. Yeah, we and you know, it, it. I guess my personal opinion is, you know, probably eight <laughs> Gaudi chips are probably overkill for enthusiasts or, you know, with small right. projects. But yeah, having having a, a cost-effective way to access maybe a single a single Gaudi chip, right. uh, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, yep. I know a lot right of folks- Right now on, very on happy. AWS, yeah. Uh, yeah, right now on AWS, you're aware that there's only one instance, one type of instance, which is the 20, DL1 24X large that has eight Gaudis, uh, but, you know, that doesn't mean that that's the end of the story. So you know, it, it, we will, like I said, look into options to enable other other uh, paths for these enthusiasts here. Um, I, we're almost out of time. I'll let Pauline determine if you want to take one more question or. Uh... Yeah, I think maybe do one more and then we'll end it at that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh... Yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, there's a question from Brian, a uh, couple of lots of questions from Brian. Uh, <laughs> XG Boost and, and uh, uh, so the question on the multiple cards, I think uh, I, it's a slightly yes is the answer, but if you can post that on our forum, uh, we'll give you a more, uh, uh, we'll explain how that can be done, Brian. Um, on the uh, XG Boost or, uh, you know, basically Gaudi is a, a deep learning training accelerator. We're heavily focused on deep learning. Mm -hmm. Um, and not machine learning. So we're not looking at for machine learning and machine learning acceleration. Uh, we're not focusing on that space where our focus is like very, uh, you know, clearly on, on deep learning. And, and that's, that's uh, we don't have plans to support XG Boost here. Um, so with that, I'll hand it back to you, Pauline. I'll answer yes. two questions instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I want to thank um, our presenters. Thank you so much for your time. This was very informative. And I also want to thank our um, participants. Thank you for giving us your time. Um, this will be, um, as we said, it's recorded. It'll be available on our website. And I'll send an email with a link um, later this week. And additionally, as um, Shree mentioned, if we didn't answer your questions, please go to our developer side and go to the developer forum and ask any questions and we'll get back to you at that. Thank you so much and um, have a wonderful rest of your day.